Flood bulbs, spot bulbs, PAR, BR, which one do you choose? I think it's finally time to shed some light on the subject. Hey, I'm Joe Deganzik, and this is Lighting Answers. It's the first episode, not the intro, but the first official episode of our Specialty Lamps mini-series, or small series, or a series of short episodes, whatever. And we are starting with none other than the largest, what I call, specialty lamp. This is a BR40. Now, we're going to have an episode within this series that's actually going to describe the differences between the BRs, the PARs, the numbering, and all of that. This episode is actually really a product review episode, but I figured we would start with the biggest one, literally. There are actually other larger ones that you can buy. However, um, this is basically probably the largest one that you would find in the store, probably generally shopping online and whatnot. So, um, for some definitions, this bulb was sent to us, uh, just for transparency, uh, was sent to us uh, for evaluation and testing by a company called Maxima out of Hop Hog, New York. And so it's an American company. The bulb is manufactured in uh, or assembled in, in China. But um, as with many of the LED bulbs and lamps these days, the fins are generally gone from most of them, including this guy. So it's a completely smooth shell. It's a plastic diffuser on the front of it. This is where the light comes out of it. It does not come out of the sides. That's the general concept between any of these spot and flood bulbs, uh, whether whatever technology it's, it's using, halogen, CFL, LED, right, or incandescent. And then the, uh, the outside of it for these guys is, of course, um, not specifically a, inside it's a reflector device, but on the outside it's a smooth shell. This is part of the heat sink. Does not actually get very hot. I actually had this running um, for a number, probably 15, 20 minutes, did not get very hot. Now, granted, this is a large bulb. It can dissipate its heat better than a smaller little LED screw-in light bulb. This is a, just a general flood, very nicely dissipated, diffused light. So you will never, ever find a BR, and you will never, ever want to use it in an application where you need a spotlight or a focused beam. You will not get that. I don't care if you put it in a a recessed can in the ceiling or a, a spotlight little thing, this is always gonna throw off a very diffused um, spread of light. This is about four and a half inches of, in diameter and tall, it's about six and a quarter inches. That's approximate. Um, you're gonna put this in a very large like type of flood um, device, whether device sounds weird. You're gonna put this in a very large recessed can. You're gonna put it in an outdoor um, like a spotlight, whether it is uh, perhaps it is one of the uh, photocell type, you know, sensors, um, motion sensor type things. The manufacturer Maxima, uh, their documentation actually says this is not compatible with photo sensors, motion detectors, and whatnot. And I kind of read that and went, why? Um, maybe it's because it's dimmable um, and you need to find a non-dimmable version. Those, um, those can... Uh, cause some havoc with um, the uh, motion sensors and the floodlight kind of outside, uh, you know, sensors, security fixtures. You know what I'm talking about. So anyways, uh, this may not be the perfect bulb for those unless the fixture actually says that it works absolutely with dimmable LED bulbs. So let's take a look uh, right now. Let's just run it through our standard uh, 30 second dimming test. So as you can see, it dims pretty well, fairly smoothly. There's still a little bit of a stair step or dim steps that you can uh, see with the naked eye, hard to see on camera, um, and very little, if any, flicker at any dim level. A little tiny bit of noise, but not too bad, definitely not compared with some LED bulbs of the past. So dimming on our torture test, pretty good. Dims down to 1%, but that 1% is brighter than other bulbs that we've tested. So we'll, we're gonna have a whole dimming episode that we'll talk about the differences and why things dim differently and the challenges with LEDs, similar to CFL, but different technology. Um, so overall, I would rate this, we go, we'll go over the specs in here just in a second. I would rate this as a pretty good 
value number one also it's a pretty good bulb um, overall this is not the most spectacular bulb perhaps um, it's not the best dimming bulb perhaps um, but it is a really nice um, attractive bulb in terms of if you're going to put it in an outside fixture you want the bulb to look nice obviously no fins things like that um, plastic and metal not too um, heavy in terms of weight if that's somehow an issue not a lot of heat output so it doesn't heat up your home uh, during the summer months so the specs the numbers all that good stuff um, this is a listed by maxima as a warm white bulb i would call it soft white it is 3000k um, so that's really closer to a nice soft white, not as yellowish as a warm white would be. We've seen those differences and how manufacturers label things, even though they put the number um, in terms of Kelvin color temperature at a certain number. So this is a nice soft white. I think it does put out a really nice light. You, could, you saw it in the photos in terms of the beam spread, but the light is a really nice soft white light. Um, it's equivalent to 75 watts, and in terms of if we're, if we're comparing it to an incandescent bulb, it is um, 12 watts to run it, so very efficient. It, has, um, it is ENERGY STAR listed. It has an 80 uh, value of 80 CRI, Color Rendering Index, which means it's going to be, it's, it's okay. It's not the most spectacular thing. 80 is about the, mo the minimum that a LED bulb needs to be these days to be anywhere um, in the good spectrum. So it's got all the right things going for it. It's a reasonable price. It's a nice attractive bulb. And I think it's probably a good one to purchase. Now, Maxima on their website does not appear to make this in other color temperatures at this time. They have a few other bulbs that do call them in like a, a cool white or a daylight white. Um, this does not. So if you need something that is a cool white or some other neutral white or a, you know a warmer white, for this BR40 with Maxima, you're, at least for now, out of luck. Uh, they have these on their website for sale. They also have them for sale on Amazon.com. We'll provide a link. That is it for this episode. We're going to have more individual product episodes covering a few different manufacturers as we go through the spectrum of specialty lamps. And not just these. We're going to talk about strip lighting. We're going to talk about the tape lighting and, and a few other things. Um, and we will have an episode that will literally just explain the differences between the BR and the PAR and give you the sizes and all that good stuff for all that technical details. So I'm Jody Ganzik for Lighting Answers, reminding you to, of course, subscribe to Lighting Answers if you want all of our episodes on all the different topics, product reviews with light bulbs, with home automation products, news as it comes out from the industry, and of course, lighting design tips and projects. Don't forget to get out there, beautify, brighten, and color your world through light, and of course, tie everything together through home automation. I'll see you next time, right here on Lighting Answers.